<laughs> Sorry. Hey, Diggy. Sorry, I interrupted you, Miss. Never was and I are on the same page here. In sync. <laughs> Not just the boy band. Yeah, I think we'll probably wait another minute or so to see if there'll be more people here. We definitely I was expecting quite a few more people to show up. Yeah, Danielle and I know Willie said he was going to join. Yeah, I saw Willie and John and Kent having some payroll discussions up in the tokenomics, so they might still be involved in that. Josh, do you know if there's anyone else from engineering, um, Dow Engineering or Extreme that's going to be joining as well? I think Adam is. I don't know if we need to wait for him. And maybe some others too. GM? Yeah. GM, yeah. Adam. GM. GM to Danielle as well. I saw she came in. Oh, yeah, GM Danielle. I can see. <clears throat> uh, I will drop a, an agenda that Diggy and I came up with just a couple of minutes ago um, in the stage chat. So if you want to follow along and or add things to this agenda as we go through it, um, please feel free to. To join the... Oh, I see it. Okay. Are we joining that Zoom? I don't think we need a Zoom with uh, okay. the ability to screen share here. Um, I can screen share this agenda if you'd like, but it's also freely available for everyone to read off of on that Google Doc. Yeah. I got it pulled up. Thanks. Yeah, this is like. A lot of this came from to what you and I discussed this morning. So feel free to add anything if you want to. Uh, is there plans to release this on V1 web or web mean V2? Web V2. Means So yeah, I'd be happy to kind of kick it off with the just a thought from myself whenever you're ready, Tyler, and then I'll we can go through this agenda. I think that's great. Yeah, um, I I'm happy to kind of guide us when we feel we're off the course or when we've hit the end of it. But this is definitely more a a meeting that's supposed to be led by um, I would say the the work stream leaders um, and then yourself um, and your team. So we can make sure everyone's on the same page and we we've realigned our expectations of what's going down. Perfect. Yeah. And I think um I had a great chat with Tyler this week. Um and just kind of in preparation for this. And I think a lot of things that came up um I just want to take some responsibility for the communication and that kind of stuff. I think as we're learning and um you know, the beginning of this, very beginning of this was like, hey, go do this over here. And I think that's how we got a little siloed and off track. Um, but yeah, I've got some good ideas of how to start updating more frequently and that kind of stuff and making sure we're on the same page. Had great chats with Tyler about getting operations more involved and yeah, just excited to go through this with you guys. So just wanted to kind of start and preface it with that.
<clears throat> Thanks, Dee. Um, I don't know if engineering has had the same sort of catch up that myself and you have had and that product has as well. So um, I'm not sure where they stand in this and maybe it is best to start at the, the first question I got from uh, Josh was that is a question about um, re releasing on mobile versus web. I don't know if we want to dig in that far or that right now into things like that. Um, Josh, I don't know if you have an intro about um, where engineering is at and what you'd like to get out of this meeting. Too. Yeah, sure. Appreciate that. Um, uh, I'm mostly in the dark about what's going on with this project. So I was just, and it came up last week. I brought it up in some conversation. Well, I think maybe it was in the EM, in a engineering manager, product manager meeting. Um, and... <clears throat> And I and the other thing I I heard I reached out to I think it was Sean and I found out and I was very glad to hear that web is going to be v two not beta dot I think that's super smart, um, and to get it there it needs to be an unchained. So my like as as I started thinking about this more and I haven't had any big conversations just just some little chats with others inside of engineering. I think we need more assistance with engineering. I, don't, I think just the current engineers that are, well, I know that they're, that Adam's been pretty, you know, getting roped in more and more. I don't have any problem with that. I know he's been working after hours on it, but I think that we, we might clarify? want to think about bringing this into the, sorry? Sorry, I was just going to ask, can you clarify that? Are you saying, Adam has spent after hours working on Unchained or after hours working on the Osmo and Osmosis stuff specifically? It's yeah. more the Unchained that yep. I've done after hours. Uh, what I've done for Osmosis is more like answering questions from Helmut specifically. But yeah. so it is a good, like, so with where we are now, I think, and I met with uh, Pasta Ghost and Elmot this morning, we're sort of at a point where our efforts can converge, I think. So I've started um, implementing Cosmos in Unchained and 75%-ish maybe of, of osmosis is identical is like the exact same thing. So I was kind of hoping to pull Pasta Ghost and Elmud in to work on the back end, the Unchained Cosmos stuff with the intention that that's completely leveraged into Osmosis. So Osmosis is basically Cosmos SDK plus the GAM uh, module. Is that specific to mobile or web or does that Support both. That's that would be a web a web thing. I think as far as I know anyway, all the mobile stuff is using our legacy Axiom watchtower poop. <laughs> I think I think that's a brilliant idea. I know that came up in our conversation this week too with the Osmosis team integration and like we like we think it's brilliant to be able to like help and help the work stream progress. Um and you know we this integration benefits from that too. So I think that's really cool. Um, and maybe it would even be good. I know we kind of dived in and maybe it would be good just to give an update just to make sure everybody on the call knows where we're at. Um, so is, is that okay with everybody? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So we've got four, technically five objectives. Um, the first one is the UI UX designs um, for all of the other objectives. And I know that Bethany is close to complete with all that. Um, second objective was just adding Osmo chain asset on the Shapeshift native wallet. Um, and so uh, that on the mobile wallet um, is working. We have add support for Osmo delegating AKA staking and reward claiming. Um, that is also done for mobile. Um, and then add support. Who are we for... delegating to? Or is the user able to choose that? 
Oh, so yeah, that's actually a great question. I'm glad you asked that. We're actually teaming up with um, Taxi Stake. It kind of came up in our in our work that um, it would be easier for us just to have one validator to allow people to stake to. Cool. Um, so it kind of came out of that. And then we talked with Sean. And so Sean has a um, proposal that's going to go live, I think, or, or at least in the forum post or some some part of the process live today. Um, where taxi stake will do like they do for the Cosmos validator, uh, you know, split yep. the revenue with the DAO. So we're going to be delegating to that one for the shapes of DAO. That's Blitz, unless you renamed it to taxi stake. Yeah, I, think, I, I know they're using cool. taxi that's, stake. Uh, that sounds great. I'm cool. all definitely 100% on board with that. I just want to make sure we're not like giving it to someone else that doesn't need it. Yeah. I'm, I'm the on the Adam um, uh, validator, it's, it was renamed to Shapeshift. So I know that he changed that one to Shapeshift. I don't know if he change, it's going to make any other changes. Gotcha. Um, um, and then the third objective was adding support for like trade functionality between Osmo and Adam. That also is, and I should say, I'm saying done as in like, it's, you know, engineering. Oh, I, it's not even engineering complete because we still need to do the testing. We still need to do a few of the final tweaks, but the bulk of the work is done is what I'm trying to say with these three objectives. So for mobile, for those three objectives, the staking wallet mm -hmm. and the swapping Osmo and Atom, that's where we're at. Um, we have the final pieces of add support for LP for Osmo for the Osmo Atom pool, and that's on uh, would be on mobile and web. So we still need to do that. Um, that hasn't really been like um, the UI UX elements are done. We still need to do some spec documentation, and we still need to you know do the work. And then key key support was our final objective. And I know that Pasta Ghost has made some great progress there. He did go back uh, this week and find some stuff to improve on. Um, but then, of course, you know, keep key support is great, but it also needs to be in V2 to be able to use the keep key, you know, and, and actually uh, execute on those things. So that's just a update on that. I can take any questions or maybe anyone from the team can answer too uh, if anybody has them. Is that consensus from our engineers that that's where it's at we're solid on like swaps between osmo and adam anyway on mobile yeah get yourself a feature flag you can try it out it's pretty cool sweet yeah. that's awesome yeah we're the bulk of the work is done there and then we're just digging through um the transactions for LPing and then farming. And now that we have experience with the previous transactions, those shouldn't be as difficult. So mobile's getting wrapped up pretty good. Yeah. So I can't think of a reason not to like wrap that up and ship mobile other than now we're adding new features in the old system before we add them to the new, which is kind of a mixed signal or pushing people back upstream in terms of like pretty quickly here, we're gonna want people to migrate out of the old and into the new platform so we can sh shut that down. Well, we very much wanna finish the entire bounty. So we're eager to get the ship in V2, Adam. <laughs> so help Yeah, me. yeah. Yep. 100%. I'm, um, I'm eager to get it shipped too. Well, so once, it's, once it's shipped in V2, it doesn't even matter if it's on mobile because V2 is, mobile friendly and you can just for mobile you can just use v2 right yeah it was in our original um proposal it i it did say mobile and web and so that's why we ended up kind of going this you know route and and for us because v2 was new and still had you know a lot of decisions to be made it was like okay let's start in, in mobile yeah, right. that's all there was to do yeah. When the project started. Yeah. Cool. So I just want to say, can we, going back to the agenda, so for mobile, one of the things that I would like to come out of this is can we get alignment on what the next steps are to get mobile over the finish line 
there's any remaining engineering pieces or if we're ready to start testing. Yeah. And then um, a strategy for testing, because it sounds like we're um, bringing in ops to help with that. Um, and then if, yeah, if there's any other engineers potentially that need to be included to get this over the finish line, and then we can ship mobile. We definitely want to ship mobile versus <laughs> it works on mobile from V2. Uh, wouldn't that satisfy a bounty that says web and mobile, if you can go on your phone and mobile device and use osmosis? That was a question. Is that right, Adam? I think so. I'm sure it would <laughs> satisfy the bounty. I, I'm just... Um... So I, I guess, we're just done, we're I okay guess. adding Excuse. new features to the old. I guess is what I just want to be sure of. That would be the only like it's maybe a strategic thing. Does the did, let me ask this related question? Does the does the bounty pay out incrementally, or is it once everything is done, the whole thing pays out? There's two bounties. One, the shapeshift one is written incrementally and the other one is written as one, but I think I think it'll all end up getting paid at once anyway, because if we're releasing mobile and web at different times and they're different features, I mean, we can get the first payment for like the UI UX stuff, I guess. Um, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm just wondering is that- do people have, I'm just wondering if the team has like an interest if mobile gets out, sounds like mobile on the old legacy mobile could be done before web V2, which would also allow for new mobile. And if there's a payment to be had, is there like incentive for the team to try to get mobile out as quickly as possible, just from the bounty perspective, that's what I'm trying to figure out. No, I don't think we are looking at it in that way. I think we're okay. just trying to deliver and make progress, um, show okay. that this proposal has, you know, and it's been months of work. I, 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 um, I think, yes, that would satisfy it if you guys are requiring that. I'm not sure who is making this call. Does it come from the product work stream of can this go in the old mo mobile app or? I mean, there's also the fact of, any like dev efforts, test all the future efforts, would it be better to just focus on web V2 and try to get that done sooner, which meets the whole bounty? Or do we spend the time working on mobile, which takes resourcing away from doing it on web V2? I don't have I an answer. I mean, I'm not on the project. I'm just, I don't you, know. Are you hearing I, us that we believe that the work for the first three milestones is complete for the mobile app and it's behind a feature flag and it's all the way through it's not like we have testing and like we can't just go turn the switch on i mean no, no, maybe no, I, testing I, I, finds I'm no saying, issues or is there that's fine like testing maybe. testing okay. still needs to be done that's that's here on the the strategy for testing and the agenda but i i am okay. just trying to get clear on I this did. point danielle i did miss that it sounded like you said it and then you kind of back to me what i heard is you backtracking and trying to say well no it's not quite not quite but it's like you know engineering done but except there's testing so i heard a, i just heard some backtracking which so if you're saying it's like just open it up to ops for testing fix a few bugs but then i think that, that, where that we're at right now that. is yeah we want to get our team all 100 like where we ended our meeting on tuesday is we'd like to get all of the team from the osmosis integration with the feature flag on, do our acceptance testing, do as much as we think, you know, is good. And then we like to work with operations um, and, you know, anyone else more like a go, no go type scenario for um, the mobile, like our idea is that we could launch mobile um, with those three features um, first. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I would, cool. as long as there's minimal engineering effort remaining and these guys can focus on the web stuff to get the bounty. Cool. I, I agree, let's let's go. So LPing has a bit, but I don't know, we're probably 80% there. Well, and, and maybe what we do is we take that suggestion that, you know, Adam's giving and say, 
hey, we did these first three here. You know, that's great. We've, we've learned a lot. And then the LPing is just in V2, and that also works in mobile. So I, I do like the suggestion for all the remaining work as well. Yeah, and that gives a push to people to move in the correct direction too. If you want to LP, jump over here. Cool. So yeah, for the next to Bethany's point, like this alignment on next steps to get mobile over the finish line. So I'd say the first one is, you know, acceptance testing from our team. The next one is ops regression testing. And I guess maybe like, does the product work stream? Do you guys also want to like do a full test and, and give a sign off on it? Engineering, how do you guys want to do that? Yeah, we'll do. I mean, I've already been doing some regression testing, but we'll do regression as well. And then uh, as engineering, these guys have all worked together and reviewed each other's stuff. And it's in V1 where we don't have much in the way of like long term architecture concerns. I, if they're good with it and the codes, they've approved the code and merged it, I think we're probably good. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And I mean, with the obvious piece that any issues that arise is clearly going to be on the team to fix, right? But yep. I think, yep. you're, I think they have the autonomy in there. It's V2 that is my bigger like concern about future proofing V2 and making sure it, it meets the architecture standards that we're starting to develop. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, 100% on where we agree with that and on board with that. Um, and I think strategy for testing, I don't think we have to go like fully on into this, but Tyler and I did chat about some ideas of like, Maybe it's a dedicated ops person that could start coming to our meetings um, and just be aware of what's going on. And then like, you know, they're get um, pulled into our bounty um, or something like that. So I think Tyler, unless, do you want to dig into that or can we kind of figure out those details maybe in a follow-up? Yeah, we can figure out those offline, um, whether that's the full work stream or just individuals, um, whatever the needs for the testing can be met, we'll, we'll for the right people to them. Perfect. Okay. Hey, if, if um if we're not going to do any more of the LP functionality in V1, does that mean that there's uh no more work needed in Watchtower for the osmosis work? Yeah, most likely there might be small bugs that I don't know. I might be aware of like one little bug, but maybe right, very right. small PRs if there are. Because that that's my other thing that I'm nervous about. The only thing I'm nervous about on the V1 side is Watchtower's been flaky forever and just in, like recently. And I know that the Thor chain had all the catching up to do, and that's probably the biggest cause of what happened recently. But I'm I'm a little protective of Watchtower also. Cool. So our bye, bye. PRs on Watchtower have been pretty minimal and safe. I don't think we've caused any issues. And like I said, like if we have changes, it's going to be like a couple lines here or there um, to fix maybe like a double transaction showing up. So I, I'm personally not too concerned okay. about Osmosis causing issues in Watchtower. And that's contained to like the Tendermint modules that are in Watchtower, Correct. where we yeah. have Thorchain and Cosmos and the other tender Tendermint things. Yeah. And my, man, I get my 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 whole nervous system relaxes if I know that we're because the LP work, whatever else that would require in Watchtower for detecting and all that kind of stuff. If I know it's just little bugs from here and fixes, I feel very comfortable with that. It, it's worth mentioning that um, Cosmos was actually broken in Watchtower. We we had to upgrade to the latest SDK to do that so there there was definitely overlap in keeping us up to date on on all, all the changes and cosmos and osmosis they move really really quick so if there's anything future it would be related to the the nodes and the schemas changing so it should be very minor thumbs up that would be like going to 43 or something yeah well i think they're both 42 
something now. Uh, Rune is in the Dark Ages, and then Osmos and Cosmos are like way in the future, and it's they're crazy different at this point. But technically, they're both SDK. <laughs> but, yeah. Hmm. Thorchain on develop anyway is on the same forty two line of Cosmos SDK. At least last time I checked. But another separate discussion. A uh, quick question. Um, is there any contracts that need to be audited or something? I know that's a, a longer process. Uh, or has that already been done? We don't have to worry about that for LP staking or anything? Yeah, not contracts. We have general, the same type will get security involvement, generally speaking. May, in this case, because it's over in V1 and it's distracted other ways, we might want to call Mr. Nerdair's attention to it. He'll just give, let him do it look at the diff of everything. Yeah, the interesting part yeah. of Osmosis is none of this is solidity. Um, they're they're doing these LP pools and they're all native Tendermint modules. Um, so if there was any auditing to be done on the pools and the LPN, it would be related to the entire Osmosis network as a whole. Um, there, there's no specific yeah. contracts that manage any of this stuff. It's so nice. Nice. Yeah, that, that, that sounds really nice. So, Adam, can you be specific what you want security to review? Uh, just like in making a significant change, like adding support for a new chain here, uh, someone with a sec security mindset should look at the changes that were made to the platform, to beta and mobile and watchtower. Okay. So yeah, no and just, change to beta. So just um, have him review the code in mobile. Well, there is tower. by beta, I'm including GraphQL. I imagine oh, okay. you guys talk through the GraphQL, I imagine from the front end, probably oh, had to yeah. change some shit there. Um, we actually are doing, hopefully this doesn't have to change. It would kind of suck if it did. We're doing a lot of direct node to the uh, Osmosis node from platform shared. Um, in this case, it was a lot easier to go that route. There is a little bit of GraphQL changes that were needed for the initial chain adapter to work. Those are basically clones of the other Tendermint coin calls. Uh, okay. No, that's fine with me. Whatever gets it done here, like this is likely the last feature change to go into V1. So let's get her done. Probably a lot less code to review too, so that's a good thing. Cool. And then I think um, so. Like, who else needs to be included in the uh, like in the bounty in the um, project to get it going live? So security, um, we'll pull. We'll definitely chat and pull in. I, I think Tyler, do, what were your thoughts on the go no go? Um, and that way we can get even like marketing and growth and support and everybody in there. Um. Yeah, I have an action item for us to have a go no go for if we are going to break out and do mobile as a, a first launch that we do a, a go no go at least schedule one at the end of this meeting. Um, and then uh, support and marketing can rally their own troops and do whatever kind of pre launch stuff they need to get accomplished and then they can give a, fill out their own go no go sheet with us. Okay, perfect. And it doesn't look like there's anyone from support here too. So uh, we'll have to follow up with them to make sure they're still on the same page. So it seems like we got to the end of the section for mobile. Does anybody else have any um, questions on that? The mobile, the launch, what we should do in between there, in between the launch? Um, I just want to make sure we're clear from a, a product perspective. So we're trading and staking, uh, and that's and then asset support, and that's pretty much it. We're not doing LPing or bonding, correct, for the mobile application. Well, I, I would say that was just suggested for the first time here, and maybe we should, I, I, maybe it wasn't a suggestion. It was, we have to do it that way. I don't know. I, I think it's a good idea. I thought maybe we could chat about it um, as a team and just double check that everybody's on the same page. But 
I, it's really up to you guys, I guess. What What does the John uh, Pasta Ghost, what do you guys think of that? Um, as far as not having LP on mobile? Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. not having LP on mobile until it's in V2. Right, and then V2 becomes mobile. Right. Uh, I, I think, yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's good that we haven't put a ton of effort into LPing on mobile yet, so I don't have a problem with that. If if it was a week from now, I'd probably kind of upset that we had wasted effort, but yeah, I think that's okay with me. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. I think that's fine also. Is there any so is there anybody on this call that thinks that that's a bad idea and the team should implement LP on mobile legacy? I, I think I'd like to come back to it after we've talked about some of the maybe like web, some of the unchained stuff, like sure. how far out we think this um, decision is, or, or sorry, sorry, how far out we think that LP would be potentially, but. I mean, I'm I'm definitely on board, but I just have a few more questions first. And, and just just to be clear, Josh, you're talking about adding uh, LP to V2 and then into the legacy mobile app, or no. adding LP and V2 and not uh, putting the same effort into the legacy mobile app? Not in legacy at all, because once it's in V2, V2 is mobile enabled. You know, it looks great on mobile. It's functional on mobile. So okay. that that's how LP gets to mobile is through v2 sure okay the one thing that i would suggest is that we talk to someone from the osmosis team to make sure that's kosher and we're not like you know just meeting their expectation on a technicality when they had something different in mind well i, I can do that but their my proposal on the shapeshift side is the one that's way more like detailed and theirs is like super general on their side so i i don't think that's okay I'll, I'll double we also that. just got Eric and John. Josh, you should ask the question again. Um, the question of, uh, well, I think Danielle wants to read. Do we do it in mobile? Okay. Is it a requirement to have this available on KeepKey? Because obviously in the web, KeepKey works fine. But on mobile, like if you're trying to view on mobile, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's just, um, it would just be key, key with uh, web v2. Okay, thanks. Nice. So yeah, I think Adam, we can go back to basically what you were saying a little earlier. Sorry, I cut you off to do my just general update. Um, but I think you were saying you chatted with um, Elma and Pasta Ghost and had some like ideas for Unchained and um, I think that's like our first step of of moving towards the web so you want to get into that again? Yeah so I had already started uh, working on Cosmos for Unchained. Um, Osmosis is a Cosmos SDK chain uh, so the effort that goes into Co into integrating Cosmos gets us, you know, some large percentage of the way through Osmosis. We basically need to, would need to add in support for the GAM module, like all the uh, market maker stuff, swapping and uh, liquidity providing in that. But we would have everything up and including staking, which is identical to Cosmos out of the gate. And then I'm thinking something like to cover all the chains, we'd have some means to, you know, plug in what's special about that Cosmos SDK chain and just leverage all the same functionality, given that they're on the same version of Cosmos SDK. That's maybe getting too much in the weeds. And my thought was we got Pasta Ghost and Elmut and Highlander chomping at the bit to work on osmosis. So let's bring them into the cosmos development. And that will get us a, a, a real good part of the way there to supporting Osmo. 
hey, at some point we can probably work on the Osmo stuff in parallel as we finish out the Cosmos SDK. And then that kind of becomes our pilot for that being an appropriate setup to integrate all the other Cosmos SDK chains, BNB and and I so guess long. if we do it that way too, it, it really does make sense that suggestion of only doing the LP and web because it means instead of taking, you know, whatever effort, we can just get them going on that like right away, I guess. As soon as we're done with this go no go in the mobile release. But after that, they could start working on that Adam support on chain. Is is that um is that yeah. where you guys were at? I think they can probably yeah. I think they could start right now or tomorrow, really. Like I we definitely don't if they're ninety-nine percent done here and there's some bug fixing, we definitely don't need the three of them focused on uh, getting mobile shipped. Cool. Great. And then um I think like for that and like where these questions start to come in is like how you know does it if we bring in other engineers for the osmo specific work like you know we're we're offering additional well it's not even offering additional work because some of these engineers are on the work stream so it's like there's a lot of like overlap that begins to happen but on the osmo specific stuff um if it's you know from our team that's great and if we have to pull anyone else in we can add them you know we could price out that part of work for the bounty um, and make sure that that's fair as well That's cool. Uh, we can, I think Adam's saying that he can do it with the existing team, at least on the Unchained side to get Cosmos and Osmosis done. And then we can look at the, uh, the front end side and then, yeah. And then let's just have it be my, my, what I would like to see is there is a, uh, like, um, what we've been talking about is we have a series of design meetings with it's Adam, Chris, or, or DeFi and probably Adam here, but maybe it does get mixed up. And then during those discussions, we can see is the existing engineering Osmos crew, the right ones. Is it better if we bring in another one and figure that out from there? Perfect. Do you think, do you think that should happen before we do a, a kickoff where we, break it down um i i not for the unchained stuff like adam's saying the unchained stuff can just go now but before we break down like doing the front end work yeah we, we need the design meetings before you do the breakdown yes okay cool in the design meeting are you saying that's for unchained or design no. of the overall v2 i mean actually i'll adam you know we're talking about having some design docs maybe what you can start with with pasta and Elmut and crew is to get some a design doc together about it just so we're following our process and yep can, can yeah back. totally yep and i mean so there's work in like uh, front end libraries, chain adapters and so on of V2. Uh, it definitely makes sense for us to follow the process we've set up. So I wouldn't be opposed to, uh, I don't know, maybe we do this initial design stuff and then have like a Cosmos SDK kickoff or Cosmos yeah. slash okay. Osmosis or something and break all the work down. I like that. that will be helpful for the for the breakdown is a, a spec for all the V2 user stories and acceptance criteria. Danielle, is, it, is that something that you're going to be putting together? Yeah, so I have um, some stuff done for, I've got a Notion doc in the DAO, product, UI, um, product and UX design, osmosis integration. Um, there's some stuff in there. I definitely, I'm sure we need to um, go through again. And then the only thing that's not done um, the LP, LP bonding, um, all of that still needs to be done. So I'd say we would we'll start with what I have and then we can, um, yeah, add. And it sounds like you're Willie, I see here, you're willing to help with that kind of kickoff. Yeah. So 
Um, love this stuff, and would be happy to help with like the spec or the, the kickoff in any way you need. I think we can blow out the spec yeah. more before we do the kickoff. I think it would help. Okay, so Smart. we can the three of us. Yeah, maybe we can work together to a degree because having having like UI designs and that is huge to informing the breakdown of that front end work when we get there. Yeah, the UX UI is pretty much ready to go. Oh, well, never mind then. That's awesome. But yeah, it'll be great to put to take the UI UX and put together a spec that has all the different user stories and custom criteria and put the UI. In. Yeah, that'll be super helpful for when you do get to the to the break. Yeah. Cool. Are those shared somewhere? I can find them easy because we'll take a look at that too. Yeah, all of it's in. Planning. Uh, we can share the Notion doc too, and then all the links to the user flows are in there. Um, and Beard and I collaborated on all of that stuff, so it all uh, aligns with everything we've done in Alpha so far. So we should be able to reuse a lot of that front end. Cool. Is that all? So that has like staking and things in it. Is that? Is it? I guess branded. Is it going to be easy for us to do it for Cosmos, like the staking stuff? Yeah, it should be identical, actually. Yeah. The only awesome. difference would be, uh, from an engineering perspective, the bridge component, because on Osmosis you have to like bridge uh, into IBC, and we're actually like doing that at least on mobile behind the scenes, so we're obfuscating that from the user. But from a UX perspective, First, it looks the same. For staking, you don't though. Not for staking, yeah. Just I see what for... you're saying with swapping. We should talk and have some part of the design stuff we need to do should be around how we handle IBC. Definitely cool. I remember talking to Sean and the way he made it like transparent to the user that their coin is jumping chains as part of a swap. But there might be reasons to not do that. And they're essentially treat them like tokens on and ETH. Diggy, you also you did um, user testing and and stuff on these flows already, right? Um, not specifically on Osmo, but because they followed what we tested with um, Yearn, it's very very similar. Um, but we uh, we didn't test because we we obfuscated the bridge component out of it from the UX perspective. If we want to bring it back um then we should test because that makes it more complicated from a ux perspective okay great so if you're following along in this agenda doc we've got um this kind of four or three bullet points for mobile the web we just did alignment on strat or sorry atom support on, on unchained the design meetings, DeFi Adam, Sean Highlander, all of you guys are gonna get together. Is there any action items? Like, do I need to do anything for those? Adam, are you cool with doing that? Or I don't know, I just wanna make sure I'm fulfilling anything I need to. Yeah, my, my plan is to work with the crew of Osmosis guys and Kevin on getting uh, design plan together for for unchained Perfect. okay cool so i've got that and that'll be maybe for, i guess we'll probably include the front end components there too because once we have the api for unchained ironed out someone can start implementing chain adapters front end shit for it okay i have the spec document we'll complete that willie danielle bethany before the kickoff, kickoff scheduled and breaking it down into tickets. And then again, we'll do a strategy for testing, likely similar to whatever we do for mobile. Tyler, anything from, from you on this side or Bethany before we move on? Um, I guess it's worth noting, right, that we're including bonding as part of this, even though it wasn't in the original proposal. Yeah, good point. Wait, what is this? Uh, bonding LP tokens in osmosis. It's similar to farming. It's or yeah, maybe okay. stake. Yeah. I gotcha.
You can't take a user that far and then not let them earn the interest on right. staking tokens. <laughs> Shitty. <laughs> that, that someone pointed that out to us. Like it's kind of implied. Like they're like, okay, you're. Um, okay, one thing in the miscellaneous category that I think we should chat about is nodes. Um, and so Highlander, can you give an update on kind of like what we're doing so far um, and what we need to do in the future? Yeah, so we're using Data Hub um, and we're running both Cosmo and Osmosis um, professional nodes. And that is actually running production watchtower right now is is this uh, osmosis node. Um, I I actually so think it's a third it's a third party service. It is the hosted. Yes, it's a it's a pay service. Um, I've been currently paying it, and I I've been rather impressed. And they've I've actually communicated with their one of their engineers, and they they stayed up to date through all these releases, and I haven't seen any downtime through through these updates. Um, so I've been. I think we should use use them more often. Um, especially, I think we could upgrade for the Cosmos node next. Um, I think for V two, at least as a fallback, like we can run our own. But I think it's worth paying to have it there as at least a fallback. Um, yeah. But... Is there any limitations? Do you get everything you get by running your own node? Yeah, they actually run multiple versions, and some are fully indexed. Um, they have the RPCs and, and the RESTful, and they have both two versions of the RESTful and the, the RPC of the index node. Um, I did not see the WebSocket specifically. Um, it's possible it's there, but it's just not in their docs. Um, I was going to reach out about that. I just saw that today about you asking for the WebSocket. Yeah, I think it's usually like the Tendermint port slash WebSocket by default. So maybe we can just try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need that, and we can look. One yeah, I saw it for a second. Did you say gRPC? They do have gRPC. I take it, since that's the way Cosmos is pushing everyone. Yeah, I'm still resisting. <laughs> so we we built on the rest, but they have both. Um, so they have four versions. They have the rest and the RPC, and they have separate nodes for when you need index stuff. Um, but yeah, they are, they have a fully indexed node, which is something that we don't actually even run for Cosmos ourselves. Um, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, this sounds awesome. Can you send There's me a post a, how to use it? There's a post in uh, Engineering Public that Highlander did a little while ago, Adam, that uh, linked to the page oh, and perfect. everything and all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. One question I have for Josh and Adam is about oh, payment wait. and. I was. I just wanted to call out one thing. I think this is a great way for us to you know, like get moving and get support in longer term um, for the decentralization purposes. Like the default is probably we spin up a a node for the operator to to run. But I wouldn't have like I don't think we should prohibit people from using third party hosting services for the nodes in order to say operate a a fox chain validator. So I'm thinking way, way ahead. Yeah, I, so I think it's great, actually. I think using a third-party service node, at the amount of maintenance that that takes off of us, would I think is great. So I'd, I'd love but to see how this the goes. The only well. worker is the payment side of it. And so I think right now Highlander's paying for it, and we'll take that out of our, our bounty. But like future payments, and I think this is something, you know, is it that we ask the engineering work stream? Is it that we put up a proposal to the community, you know, to yeah. ask five hundred dollars a month to run this node? You know, it, how how can we do that? It's a good question. I mean, I would put it in with our AWS bill, right? It's um, the DAO currently doesn't. Uh, I'm going to repeat broken record, uh, Major Hayes here. The DAO creates open source code, right? The DAO is not actually running anything. So, yeah, uh, Will, Will is working on a proposal uh, in coordination with Marley to enable the DAO to basically uh, own and run its own infrastructure through uh, taxi state, basically. Um, so, that proposal is like in progress and coming soon. And the idea is that the DAO, would, the DAO would basically be effectively able to pay 
Tactry State to run nodes. Um, All right. So there's your Danielle. There's your there's your answer. Go to Taxi Stake. Perfect. So yeah, I think maybe what we do then is um, just kind of continue to pay for it. We'll pay back Highlander <laughs> for what we've used so far, and maybe we could you know think about it. Okay, we need to pay it for three months, six months, whatever it is, out of the bounty, and then have a plan to move to a um, self-hosted somehow self-hosted node. Yeah, let's let's plan on having this migrated for V2 launch. <laughs> Does that sound like a good hard cool. date for yeah. everybody? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not involved. That's like to ta that again, you got to go to taxi stake and if this proposal passes and all that kind of stuff, it's really currently right now running infrastructure is not anything the DAO does. Okay. Yeah, we'll work on it. So it seems possible, right? But this is not really the right um, audience to ask that question or set that goal with. Okay. Great. So that's what I added to the miscellaneous. Um, Tyler, I think you had some points in here. Um. I, I'm just wanting to make sure that we get a go no go set up for each different launch so that we can make sure that marketing and support have everything that they need and that ops can give final testing once engineering has given a thumbs up that the osmosis team um, deploys are where they need to be and everything is working as expected. So I would say that hopefully we only need one or two go no goes um, for the mobile launch and then web, we can just kind of repeat the process after doing the kip ops and things like that. Um, uh, there are some notes here. I don't know if Diggy, if you had anything else that wanted to be brought up or if you wanted to pass the mic over to Josh or Adam again too. No, um, I don't think so. Yeah, I think we have some good takeaways from this meeting. Um, I'm really glad, glad we had it and yeah, um, I'm excited to move into next steps and get mobile out the door. Cool, and I think, yeah, the last thing I see on the agenda is like consider doing stand up or weekly Osmo update with engineering leads, consider adding it to like op sprint or stand up. So I, I've i been attending all the um, op sprints and the Monday uh, engineering and product stuff. So I'd be happy to to give updates there if we wanna add it to those agendas. And then if, if you did want it in like a stand-up form, I think Sean, maybe that would be suited, good suited for you to keep people updated. Um, thoughts, thoughts on how, how engineering, um, how you guys would like to be updated and how often so we can just get that regular cadence going. Yeah, I mean, we'll get the stand-up stuff automatically, I, I think, in terms of the weekly stuff. Uh, I'm at the product engineering one. I haven't made it to many of the ops sprints ones. So I guess I don't have a strong yeah, I, preference other than that. I think it would make sense. I, I guess I would support, I'm not asking for it, but I would support if Danielle updated on osmosis on the weekly ops sprints. And I agree that between Sean and Adam and everybody else, we I think we'll have the engineering side of things covered. Is the weekly ops sprints a better venue than maybe say the EMPM sheet that's weekly as well, or is, is would that be a better event? Yeah, well, and I'm that's why I was saying the weekly ops is because I think between Adam and Sean and everybody, we've got the. the I think yeah, the the it'll be covered in the in the standups and everything for for to keep engineering up to date. Cool. Sounds good. I thought I heard you say to have her do it in the EMPM, which made me think the eleven thirty Monday. I was saying op sprint. You should come to op sprint, Adam. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Adam, do yeah, you? Are I'd you, like to. It just depends on what's going on. Yeah. Are you ask? Are you suggesting that Danielle we put a separate section in the engineering? No, I think we're. Quickly? I, yeah. I like the ops sprint idea. Yeah. Since okay. it's like a temporary effort type thing. 
I'll get you a section in there, Danielle, and get you invited so you can do updates in there for. Sign me up. Like too, it's worth thinking up with with the marketing work stream too, and figuring out a strategy from a marketing perspective and when we actually want to market. If we're gonna do some marketing post mobile, or if we're gonna wait until it's on alpha. But Should we do like, that um, during the go no go, or have a specific meeting for that? Uh, well, Pcoin's on the call. I guess we can ask him what he would like to do. I'm super hesitant to do anything that drives new users to old platforms. So I agree with you on that. that. Um, Danielle, let's schedule something with Pete separately um, to talk about marketing. Yeah, I have that one. Plus one on Adam's point. I don't like the idea of driving new people back to the code that we all know is getting deprecated. I, at the same time too, it's like, I don't know, as long as we're bringing users into the shapeshift, we're, the plan will be to migrate them all to the, to the new version and stuff. And um, the data.shapeshift.com and the mobile app are in a solid place right now. So I, I think I'm not completely opposed to it. I hear both sides of it. Anything discuss with the plan. Yeah, would you guys be open to like something kind of in the middle where it's like a few tweets, maybe we chat with the, you know, Osmos, Osmosis um, community, um, but not do like, you know, really wide, large push. I mean, I, I do kind of what Willie's saying too, like, I think it is good for us to be releasing new features and I, I do see it as a benefit. I hear what you guys are saying, but I do see it as a benefit that Shapeshift is making progress and to be able to share that with people. Yeah, I, I hear that point. Um, you've convinced me a little further toward that direction. I think either are fine as long as it's not, as long as marketing and like the the event of announcing it for mobile doesn't take away or overshadow or pull resources from uh, attention toward Web V2, I can be comfortable with it. Cool. All right. So we'll I, I put it on here, action item, marketing growth um, with our team. And we'll definitely, you know, run it by everybody and make sure we have a good plan, but you know, maybe somewhere a good compromise of of nothing insane, but you know, being able to share it with at least like the osmosis community and that kind of stuff. Okay. So three action items, the kickoff. Um, I don't think we're 100% ready to schedule this stuff right now. Um, I'd like to just get our team going and, and maybe by like Monday, we can get some of these hard dates um, scheduled Monday, Tuesday, next week. Tyler, is that okay with you? Yeah, sure. I think that's great. And um, just get with me and we can get them on the calendar and get everyone in invites that need to go. Cool. And yeah, um, if anybody does um, want to get the feature flag turned on, um you know shoot me your email address for mobile um we can get you guys including you can check out what what's there so far awesome thanks d we only got two minutes left does anyone else have anything they'd like to add on this before we run off to other calls i just want to super thank glad we had this meeting just wanted to thank um whoever set it up but I feel a lot better about osmosis and the plan forward here than I have in a while. I was trying, that's exactly what I was trying to say before I, before Adam started too. So yes, ditto. Thank you so much. Well, yeah, thanks guys for getting together and, and thanks Tyler for seeing that we all just needed to get in one room together. So appreciate you Tyler a bunch for, for setting this up. I'm just happy to do this. Good job of um, operating, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, really, I'm happy this happened. So um, if we need to do more of these in the future, we'll do them maybe earlier in the process. Yeah. Learn and, and evolve. And DAO. And DAO it. Mm -hmm.
Well, GM guys, we'll see you in the next call. See ya. GM. Yeah. Yeah.